Doc, I never told you this. I have a confession. Uh-oh. Before I found out who you were, I didn't know who you were. Let me explain. You know I'm a football guy, right? So before you became my guy, Ed Two Tall Jones was my guy. Okay. So then I watched okay. this movie. Yeah. And you, you know the movie, right? The fish. The fish that saved <laughs> Pittsburgh. And then you became my guy. Yeah. Always that wasn't, real, that, wasn't uh, that wasn't artificial. That was real acting. It was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I was being me. <laughs> like, cause, yeah. cause, like, have you ever seen that movie, Fish Saved Pittsburgh? Yeah, you need to check it out. So yeah. it's a basketball movie. It's classic. So yeah. when See, I saw like- that. And you know what he was doing? I became a fan, and then my father sent me to, to, to uh, took me to the a garden to watch him play, and I was like, "That was real!" Yeah, yeah. Like he went baseline, and when he dunked it, and the crowd stood up, because I was a, a high level juvenile delinquent, I was always getting in trouble. <laughs> so I seen him go baseline, throw it down, the crowd went crazy. It's like when the crowd stood up, like the basketball guys just enter me, because I always had to address my father as sir, because he was like, you know, don't talk to me until you get your life together. So I was like, sir, I finally figured out what I want to do with my life, and he was like, what? He was like, I want to be like this man here. He was like, you want to be like the Dr. J? And my father said this to me. He said, I'll make you the best big man ever. And then he started throwing names I never heard of. He said, I'm going to make you like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I'm going to make you like Will Chamberlain. I'm going to make you like Bill Russell. But I wouldn't even worry about those names. I was worried about this name right here. So, Doc, I always, I always want to ask you this question. Yeah. You know, this era we live in, they talk about the GOATs. Yeah. And they talk about Michael. LeBron, they talk about Kobe. Do you get upset that your name is not mentioned? Because for all the people that's watching, you invented all this. You, you see this off. big house? That's you. You see all these goddamn cars I'm driving? That's you. You see all the fancy suits I'm wearing? That's because of you. So I get upset when they don't mention your name. Do you get upset when people don't don't even say your name, this, this younger generation? Well, what happens is uh, my nephew, who you know, Barry, he uh, he sometimes give me a call and he said they did it again. Did what? They left you out. <laughs> and I'm just like, get used to it. You know, we just uh, happened to be, to, we preceded the era in basketball of the really, really big money, mm-hmm. really, really big hype, the things associated with the international game. And I, you know, I was like one of the first to go over to China and go over to England. And you were the first. Over there and play. And everywhere I went, they, they said, the Globetrotters were here. Can you spin the finger on your ball? Can you spin the ball on your finger? And I'm like, no, I ain't too good at that, but I could do this. Right, and then right. I showed them, you know, the stuff that I could do. So uh, I think that in time, you know, justice will be done. But I can't lose no sleep over right. something that, I didn't have or that I don't have. You know, I've been blessed in so many ways. You know, my family, my friends, uh, my associates, the opportunities that I have. I've been blessed in so many ways, man. I ain't got that time for no nonsense. Yeah, but that upsets me because it upsets me because you paved the way. Right. So like Charles, Charles Barkley always called me petty way. They talking about all these big men. I have to let people know, no. I was the first big to bring that up coast to coast with style like I wasn't the first big the first big seven drill. Real. First big I was the first up. big dude with style because of him and Matt to bring it up so let, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just let you know I'm always keep your name alive because if, if it wasn't for you it wouldn't have been no magic if it wasn't for you you and magic it wouldn't have been no Mike if it wasn't for you magic and Mike it wouldn't have been no me no Kobe no Brown so I just want to let you know ever since you signed this ball for me you, you remember that day yeah, man. Yeah, Remember I mean, the thing about us. Yeah, yeah. You know. So I, 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 we'll I just see each wanna... other every day, but when we do, I mean, it's an occasion. It's you know, it's it's a special time because of the things that you do and you say, and you know the way you help to keep my name name alive and whatever. And I try to reciprocate. I you know. I talk about the big diesel. So that was the first time I, I saw him play. Mm-hmm. Second time I met him, I thought I was dead. Oh. Would you like to hear the story? Yes. No, no, for real. I thought I was dead. So this was in LSU my junior year. I know I'm going pro. I know I'm going pro. So Coach Brown had this thing, if you miss class, you're going to have to run. Right. So I had the triple OG lock on my door. So I'm in school one day. I had an 8 o'clock class. I was like, I only got two months. I'm not going. Bro, I was sleeping. And Dr. J was in my room, and he put his hand on my chest. And he woke me up. That was my first time physically meeting him. He was in my room. And he said, hey, man, Coach Brown said, meet him at the track. Ooh. I was like this. I was like, what? And when I looked up, I, was saying, I thought I was dead, bro. <laughs> I looked up and I was like, 
because you know, cause you know he got them big hands. Right, so he he hands chest, I'm like, I was like, in my mind, I was like, I don't <laughs> die. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm dead here in right. LSU because you know, right. night before I don't drink, but right. I had a few. I had a little something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so he said, hey man, Coach Brown said meet him at the check. So that was the first time I met Dr. J. Oh, that was awesome. I was, there, I was trying to recruit him for Converse. Mm. And uh, they sit me down, set it up. Coach Brown, you know, gave me access to the room. He said, go on in there. He, he probably just rest him, but tell him he's going to have to run, mm. you know, because he knows, he knows the rules here. So I went there to talk to him about Converse. Right. And, uh, you know, that, that little incident happened. It's, it seems like it sticks, sticks with him all, right. all these years. Right, you Dr. J, man. Is it true Charles Barkley told you? You know, you, you know Charles is a big fibber. He told us that he told you when he got there, he said, I went up to Dr. J and said, this is my team. Is that true or not? A never said that. Oh, okay, <laughs> Why good. Why would he be lying? He, that, yeah, you Charles, you're lying, Irving. mother. What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah, see? Okay, see. He, he, called, me, he called me Mr. Told him. He called me Mr. Irving. And, and plus, I seen Dr. J and I told him. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I want to be just like him. <laughs> word for word. No, I, you know, I always welcome rookies in with open arms, want to, you know, feel comfortable and whatever. Yeah, but, you know, Charles didn't come in in the takeover mode because Moses was there, I was there, Bobby Jones was there, uh, Maurice Cheeks, Andrew Tony, And we got guys who are Hall of Famers just like him who were there before him or whatever. So it, I think it took him a, a minute, you know, in his first three years before he, they sent him to Phoenix, you know, that third year is when he, when he arrived as – Sir Charles. So I said on the podcast last week that I hazed Kobe one time and like the FBI came down. Did you haze Barkley? Did I haze him? Yeah, did you haze him? <laughs> or As a rookie. On camera or hazing like no, hazing? Like, no, no. <laughs> Not haze, haze. Like, you know, uh, you know, go get the, go get the, get the water, water and donuts and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we were a little beyond that. Him and, him and uh, Frankie Edwards came in together. Okay. So they were the two rookies. And, you know, we didn't give him too hard a time because we were really a, a veteran team mm -hmm. or whatever. You know, we didn't even know Charles was going to be a starter because he had Mark, Mark Ivoroni playing ahead of him. And then he showed his stuff in practice because I saw one time he, he had this thing where he would get on the baseline and then he would just start backing up. And, you know, he was wearing about 280. Or whatever, he started backing up. So whoever was behind him was getting pushed all the way to the foul line. Right. And that's how he got a lot of rebounds. And, you know, we, we noticed and said, hey, man, it's effective. And actually, uh, Paul Silas used to do the same thing. So I don't know whether he got it from Paul Silas or he invented it himself, but it worked. 